tonight. Be afraid. Be very afraid. As the world turns on these days of our lives, one woman dares to tackle the fears of the young and the restless, the bold and the beautiful. So please welcome to the stage, comedian Shonda Pierce. But then I spent so many nights eating all those Krispy Kremes, and I could see I'd never fit in my blue jeans, and so I'm back on no mother we were dancing <laughs> just slightly I think it's so funny don't you just that's a that's a little one from one of my <laughs> don't people crack you up that join a gym and they're so proud of it you know it's like they wear this sweatshirt I belong to the gym <laughs> I want one of those shirts that says I belong to the bakery You know, I, I'm just not the workout type of person. You know, and the funniest thing is workout people scare me. My husband is a real workout kind of person. He goes to the gym three or four times a day. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to get out of the house. <laughs> I just thought of that. <laughs> I think he's scared of me. <laughs> no, but it's so funny. Are you at the age? I'm at 
the age or at the stage in my marriage where my husband walks in the room and it scares me to death. I mean, not that he looks weird or anything, but it, it's, have you ever done that where you're folding clothes, singing praise and worship? You know, and having a, well, don't y'all sing praise and worship when you're folding clothes? But it's true. You're trying to, you know, you just mind your own business in your own little world. And the man you've lived with for 25 years walks in, oh. <laughs> you know, and, and the thing is, they get furious. And you know why? Because you just scared them to death. Because <laughs> yeah, they go, oh, what, what? I'm like, it was you. This is the thing. This is the, but what is scaring my husband is that I'm old. And I'm going through hot. I'm going through hot flashes. Oh, don't clap. I had four on the way here. Do you know how much trouble it is to get dressed, pull off the car, wring your shirt out, put it back on and head on? You know, it's ridiculous. But the hot flashes, I think <laughs> if my husband survives a hot flash with his heart, that'll be amazing because do you do this to your husband? You're sound asleep, sleep, sleeping well. And he's just, you know, snoring, you know, having a wonderful time, which really ticks you off to really begin with. <laughs> But you're, you know, you're sleeping, he's snoring, and all of a sudden you just, whoo, whoo, I am burning up. <laughs> and he sat straight up in bed, what, what? Get my gun, oh, I don't have a gun. <laughs> it just scares her to death, but that's what my husband's going, we girls have the hot flashes and the mood swings, that is what we deal with at growing old. You guys. <laughs> You're the scary ones. <laughs> you get hair. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Look at this guy. It just falls off the top of your head. And <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. It just cracks me up. You know, I wake up in the middle of the night, reach over to hug my husband, and there's gentle Ben in the bedroom. <laughs> It's like, good gravy granny. You know, so, you know, you try to be a helpful wife. I do. I wake up in the morning. Dear, dear, let me help you shave. You're back. <laughs> he doesn't need a tattoo. I've carved my initials in his... <laughs> that up. <laughs> At my age, making up anything is good. Tonight, I thought we would talk about fear, which is an odd subject for a comedian, but I sat on an airplane not long ago and read a, a huge article in Time Magazine of people who face the most incredible phobias and fears, and, and all of us have been going through some scary times. I have a sister-in-law, hello, who is scared to death of spiders, and I don't want to belittle your pain, Doris, but Doris has arachnophobia thing. Is that what you call that? She had a whole movie made out of her. <laughs> no, actually, Doris flooded her entire house trying to get rid of a little granddaddy long leg spider. <laughs> this is true. She's running the bathwater and, uh, and sp spotted this spider in, in her bathroom, and it was devastating to her. And so she ran out of the house, stuffed a towel under the bathroom door and, uh, so he wouldn't escape and ran next door to call my brother to tell him, please come home, there's a spider in the house. <laughs> By the time he got home, the whole house had flooded, you know, it just... <laughs> the funny thing was watching her explain to him what she's doing in the neighbor's house with a towel wrapped around her. <laughs> Isn't my, my brother's going, I am going to kill you. I have brother phobia. <laughs> of my brother showing up to kill me. This is the truth. I got an email from a girlfriend who is terrified of statues. This is, this is, I'm not belittling her pain, but didn't you want, I just wanted to write her and go, they're not real. <laughs> She's scared of statues. Now, I've, I've seen some statues that are scary. They're naked, but still. <laughs> But they say that is a real phobia for people that are afraid of statues, which just cracks me up a little, you know. I have a phobia of my own I'm trying to overcome. I have stobophobia. 
I told my husband I was diagnosed with stovophobia. <laughs> Not long ago. It requires me to eat out often. It's hard to deal with, but <laughs> I'm getting over it, you know. You know, there is a, a true phobia called aviophobia. It's people who are afraid of flying. And I believe after probably 9-11, a lot of us face that. We who travel a lot, I was nervous about getting on an airplane. And, and God is good, and we live in a country who works hard, the best that we can anyway, to protect its citizens. And we don't always get everything right, but you're so grateful. I find as I get older, I'm just like my grandmother. She was so patriotic. I mean, if the president was on the radio or on television, the world stopped. Stop, hush up, the president's on TV. You know, and I'm like, last month before elections, you hated the guy. <laughs> well, he's our president now, so you just hush up, you know. And so, you know, you just are kind and you had to sit there and listen to every word, you know. But it, And I find myself very patriotic like that. I go through the airport and there's those guys and little G.I. Joes. <laughs> and you find yourself, I just go up and hug them, you know. <laughs> they just look at me weird. <laughs> but it's true. You just go, oh, thank you. I call them G.I. Joey. <laughs> I mean, I'm not being ugly, but they look 12. Have you seen some of these guys? Don't you want to go up and go, excuse me, honey, does your mommy know you're here playing with the machine? <laughs> My Lord. I am grateful they're there. Well, tonight, it's kind of different. We've put together a wonderful show. I felt like, what is that? Ed Sullivan, a wonderful show. We're going to uh, do some crazy things. We've got some wonderful special guests, some new music, a uh, couple of commercials for you to enjoy. Um, and if you don't enjoy them, we don't care. <laughs> See, we'll take that laugh right there and we'll drop it in. <laughs> no matter what you do, I will look good. <laughs> this is true. And tonight, this is going to, we've got a couple of things. I'm, I want to shock my mother. I'm going to cook. <laughs> That'll shock my whole family. <laughs> we've got a cooking segment. We have a cooking segment, some new music, and uh, a lot of fun. So stick back. <laughs> Sometimes, no matter what happens, I will look stupid. <laughs> Sit back, have fun. Be afraid. Be very afraid. We'll be back right after this. This week, Fear TV presents The Mall Factor. Join us this week as one mother faces what every mother fears. Laundry Day. Thursday night today, 7 Central. Hello, class. We are going to cook. What in the world is this? <laughs> hmm, supper last night. So, here's the thing. Here's our little cooking apron. Um, and so, so here's what I learned. I was in Houston not long ago, and the thing that scares me about uh, cooking and, and, and eating out are basically utensils. <laughs> I'm a little distracted because what in the world is this? <laughs> I saw these in the dentist office. <laughs> Actually, I knew a girl once. <laughs> Just at night, this is what she looked like. <laughs> that wasn't in the script. I just thought I would share that. And so, here's the thing. <laughs> 
I learned. I, I went to this fancy church dinner. Now, <laughs> were you there? This was a fancy church dinner in Houston. I don't know. Maybe the churches in Houston are a little up there. Our church dinners in Tennessee are a little different because in Houston, they had gazillions of silverware at your plate place setting. I mean, it was really fancy church supper. We don't even use silverware at our church supper. <laughs> you don't need a fork with Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know what I mean? <laughs> you pass around the bucket and a napkin. You know what I mean? If you're really fancy. If it's just Wednesday night, it's a bucket of chicken and a roll of paper towels, you know? <laughs> so I was at this fancy church dinner, and the thing about it is I was on the front table because I was the special speaker and I didn't know that that's why I was at the front table and and I'm sure these people have rethought their seating arrangement I didn't know that at fancy little dinners like that everybody waits for the special guest <laughs> do you know what kind of power it feels like when you pick up your fork and the whole room goes <laughs> it is so cool so, you know, I had fun with that. <laughs> we were just kind of waiting for the little guys to show up with the, uh, you know, the thing. and they served this in courses. I mean, it took hours and hours, you know. It made me feel sorry for them. I mean, I throw the whole meal on the table. Pfft, there you are. <laughs> they would march out, you know, and have a little dome over the thing and, you know, sit down, uh, set it all together, you know. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Well, uh, there I am at this lovely church supper, and they had this kind of stuff in a goblet. And uh, if you're Catholic, you're familiar with a goblet. But if... <laughs> but if you're not, you're a little worried. And so they set this... They set this down in front of everybody. And, of course, everybody's waiting for me. <laughs> you know, and I thought, well... Here it is. I punched doors. She was with me. I punched doors. We kind of looked at it, and I was like, you know, we're both from Tennessee, so we picked it up. Cheers. <laughs> and then the lady whispered, honey, that's vicious soir. I said, yes, it is. And then she very deliberately picked up her soup spoon. <laughs> Me, I was so humiliated. I said, oh, here, just drink it. It's a lot faster. <laughs> I did tell her, you should have had a V8. Some kind of little cold tomato soup, potato soup stuff. Have you seen that? Oh, please, heat that stuff up. <laughs> anyway, that's what I've learned about little fancy dinners. And so I, I see those little ordeals, and I come home and try to mimic them. I want my friends to think I have some class, you know, or that I'm out there learning something. And so I had my pastor over, and that's always kind of a scary time when you're trying to cook well and have th nice things. And so I had the preacher over. You know what I learned about? Martha Stewart won't tell you these things, but <laughs> let me just share this with you, Imrael. This, <laughs> this is true. Never have your pastor over for Sunday dinner and potty train your children in the same day. <laughs> Because James Dobson will tell you, oh, great and mighty children raising wonder, you should applaud and make a big deal out of the deal in the potty. You know what I mean? And you, and you, nothing comes between the big deal and the potty. So the pastor's there. We're having dessert. The meal's gone good so far. And Zachary walks in with his deposit. <laughs> I won't tell you what we were having for dessert, but just know it didn't go well, you know? And, but we cheered, we clapped for Zachary. We we're like, good boy, yes. Even the pastor was like, well, yes, fine. <laughs> I think he was curious because Zachary was 10, but still. <laughs> Now, the 
nevertheless, it, it was a wonderful dinner. And so I thought tonight I would help make a lovely dessert. And it would inspire some of you ladies to not be so afraid of the kitchen. Okay? So we're going to call this little segment. Are you ready? Cooking with Shana. <laughs> Hi, Zachary. Do you have a little deposit? <laughs> I, I just, I'm just kidding. I know you're, you're, you're doing well now. You're 12. <laughs> so, thank you for coming, Zach. So why are you here? We're kind of in the middle of something. I just want to see you cook something. <laughs> So, Zachary, you know what this is? <laughs> Me neither. Okay. <laughs> Actually, my grandmother used one of these often on me. <laughs> so, be afraid. Be very afraid. So, Zachary, what I've learned about cooking... We'll edit this out, but he's... <laughs> we just happen to walk around with these at our house, don't we? <laughs> So, so, Zach, what I've learned about cooking is that it is all about the presentation. If it really looks kind of cool on the plate, people really don't care what it tastes like. I mean, look at these magazines. Who makes things to look like? You could scratch and sniff this. That looks really good. You could cut it out and just eat that. So, what I've decided we're going to try to make one of these. Oh, look. Ooh, lovely. We're going to try to make one of these wonderful desserts right here. So is all the ingredients are listed here very carefully, except we have no food. Got any ideas here, Zach? We got oranges. We got some sugar. <laughs> we got some sugar and... Uh... <laughs> backpack that perhaps we could use. <laughs> I don't know what that stuff is over there. What you got? Some what you got for us? Leftovers, that's all. Leftovers from lunch? Okay, you have to be creative, Zachary. Here we go. Are you ready for this? Oh, this is great. Let's just use this. Oh, wait, I've seen this done before. They always have these little fancy things. What else is in here? Bubble jug? Are you allowed to eat this? Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Y'all could start... Uh, Praying. <laughs> what is this? Okay, it's all about presentation. See, so you put a lovely little squiggly thing. Haven't you seen the squiggly thing? <laughs> okay, the squiggly thing. Da -da, da -da. Maybe we should have music to cook by. Emerald does. There we go. I think they just make it a little star thing or something. The preacher will never know. <laughs> He'll think it's like the star of David or something. We gotta make 22 of these. What you got there? Oh, great. This is great. Do my hands? Lovely. 
And you put this little bubble gum on here, it will last a lot longer. <laughs> now, carry that safely and put it somewhere safely. I have 21 more to go. Y'all have a minute, don't you? <laughs> you better come back here with the backpack. <laughs> in my teeth because you know you have to eat while you cook that's the best thing about cooking you eat while you're cooking it then you sit down and eat what you cooked then you eat the leftovers because you know it'll kill the dog okay this is the truth I, I am not a, as a, you know bashing Martha Stewart as I have been known to do I've been known to watch her and beg her to come and live at my house my mother's always kind of fussing at me about my cooking. She thinks I need to feed the kids a little more vegetables than I do. And, of course, my mama grew up, you know, Southern woman. I told her I know okra is a vegetable, but I don't think rolling it in cornmeal and frying it in bacon grease really <laughs> matters. <laughs> That's my mama's cooking. She fries everything. She will fry mashed potatoes. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? I am not kidding. She loves to fry things. I think that's wonderful. I wish my mother would go on some of those cooking shows on television, like Julia Childs. That's what my mother should be, the Southern Julia Childs. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> you know, making, you know, cornmeal. You know, what is that? Making corn fritters? Is that what they call it? <laughs> I just think it'd be funny, because, you know, corn fritters and a bottle of Jack Daniels there on the counter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you know, Julia, she has her, she's does all this French cooking anyway. It just the thought occurred. <laughs> There's a show out there right now that everybody's crazy about, and I'll tell you the truth, I kinda like it myself. Trading spaces. Anybody watch Trading Spaces? <laughs> I love that show. You know why we watch it. It's like the, you know, modern day Hatfields and McCoys. We just watch it for the fight at the end. It's the truth because trading spaces would absolutely terrify my neighbors. <laughs> can you imagine me showing up on your front porch with a sledgehammer and a can of spray paint? <laughs> We're going to be creative. You know, so if your neighbor was Martha Stewart, trading spaces would not be so bad. You'd be trading in a minute, you know. But if your neighbor was a plumber, That'd be a little scary, because you come home and your grandmother's dining room table has been rearranged and made out of PVC pipe. <laughs> so it, it'd just be a little odd. There's scary things on television. Cartoons are on these days that are so scary you can't let your kids watch them. There are cartoons on television that nobody should be watching. <laughs> I don't know whatever, whatever happened to Porky Pig and Donald Duck, you know what I mean? It is like some scary, odd things. My, my husband staring at television over a length of time is scary. Men are obsessed these days with the Weather Channel. <laughs> How many of you have husbands at home staring at the Weather Channel? That's my husband. The funniest thing is about David, the minute I leave town, I know one thing. He's standing over the sink eating, watching the Weather Channel. Never sits down. He just, you know, it's just so funny. They're obsessed. You know why they are obsessed with the Weather Channel? It's the maps. Men will not ask for directions because they... <laughs> <laughs> so they stand there to memorize the maps. <laughs> you know it's not the exciting music. It's the same music you hear in the dentist office for seven say. You know what I mean? And I don't think it's the girls. Even though they're nice girls, but they're always about seven months pregnant. <laughs> it's like, what is going on at the Weather Channel? <laughs> <laughs> Every one of those girls are always expecting. You never know what the weather is like in Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
little Harriet is standing in front of the cold front. <laughs> you know, it just, it cracks me up. That's just how it, there are so many shows he is just delighted with my husband. Fishing shows. My husband loves fishing shows. Fishing shows crack me up. Have you ever noticed this? It's 14 different cities, 14 different lakes, one fish. <laughs> it's the same fish every episode. I don't even think it's real. I think they ripped that Billy Bob singing fish off the thing. <laughs> I just throw a hook in that thing. <laughs> fish comes up singing. You know, and it's so funny. My husband loves the fishing shows, and I'm glad that he does. He has something, you know, wonderful to watch. Rah, rah. And <laughs> because the thing about it, the dialogue on these fishing shows are pretty <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Have you ever, I mean, sometimes I'll be cooking or something and I'll hear him in there, you know, fascinated. And so all you do is hear the sound. And so you're not watching the picture and this is all you hear. Look, big fish. Yeah, it's a big fish. <laughs> fish on, fish on. <laughs> yeah, it's a real big fish. Yeah, it's a real big fish. <laughs> What'd you catch him on? Oh, that monocure, monochrome filament line. That I got down at Billy Bob's just the other day. <laughs> you know, it's just so funny. And the whole thing that cracks me up about my husband, and fishing for that matter, he's just, he loves fishing, is this whole catch and release mess. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like, whatever happened to the big hunters and gatherers concept? <laughs> Weren't they supposed to go out and find us the food, bring it back? No, my husband catches and releases. <laughs> So he fishes for hours and hours and hours, and all he brings home is a picture of himself kissing a fish. <laughs> What's for supper, dear? I don't know. I can't put this in cornmeal and fry it up for a family of four. <laughs> no, no, no. He loves fishing. I think it's funny. Hunting shows are the same way. I don't understand hunting shows. They need catching or at least hunting shows. <laughs> That's the truth. Give Bambi a break. <laughs> No, but this is the truth. This is, they go to all this trouble saving the elk from, you know, extinction, and then they just go kill them every Saturday afternoon. You know, I think they need to partner with Discovery Channel and have some vet, you know, digging the bullets out. Here, now, release. <laughs> That's kind of gross, isn't it? Nah, they don't do catch and release hunting shows. I think that cracks me up. I, I tell you what scares me on television is women who feel like it's necessary for them to give birth on national television. <laughs> what is wrong with these girls? You know, it just cracks me up. People that allow a camcorder into that room while they're having a baby, I don't get that. It's not your best side. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not right. And you know, the only women who love to have their births taped are those who give birth naturally. Because <laughs> you're just so proud, aren't you? Yeah, it's like your little war trophy, you know? It's like, what's so natural about a woman laying on a table going, ah! <laughs> that is not natural. That should be on the sci-fi channel. <laughs> You know, it's, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just not for the natural thing. I think the Lord gave us two things in this world, chocolate and epidurals. <laughs> I'm signing up for both of them. Now, you know, married people are, are interesting folks. I've been married now <clears throat> longer than dirt. I've been married a long time. Married my high school sweetheart. He is the love of my life. Met him sitting right behind me in speech class when I was in the 10th grade. Yes, he's so precious. <laughs> he's the only guy in speech class, but still. <clears throat> now, he's a wonderful fellow. We've been married 20 years, and uh, it's been glorious. Thank you for the enthusiasm. And so... <laughs> But married people are, are funny folks. You can tell couples have been married a long time. They start kind of looking alike. <laughs> have you noticed that? They're the ones early at the mall doing the little walk around. 
They have the matching outfits. My husband would kill me if I bought matching outfits for him. Look, let's go to the mall, dear. There is no way he's going to dress like his wife. It's just so funny, but married folks crack me up. There are some things that happen along the way, I think, in married life that are funny and some things that aren't so funny. And I decided that tonight, rather than to tell you about these things, I'd just show you. <laughs> show and tell. Goes a little something like this. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> you scared me to death. You were born scared. Oh. Man can't even walk through his own house. Well, for heaven's sakes. I looked at the clock a little bit ago. I think she's starting her first class right now. I've been thinking about her all day. You know, it's going to be real quiet around here with her in college. <laughs> Well, that's what I need to talk to you about. <laughs> You're going to find this really hard to believe, but um, I don't think it's going to be that quiet around here for long. You're kidding. I'm so glad you're thinking about this, too. Glad? I'm devastated. No, We're too old to start this again. No, 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 don't be devastated. Listen, listen, uh, you don't have to do anything. You just sit back and watch. I'll do all the work. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, dear, but I think I have a little something to do in all of this. Okay, okay, you can pick out the color. The color? What in the world are you talking about? Color. I've been looking through this magazine, planning what we can do with her room. It's unbelievable. I've been drawing out sketches ever oh, since last summer. Good gravy. The exercise equipment is getting just really compact now. We can even move the treadmill in our bedroom mm. down, to the, down to her room. It'll be great. Yes, we'll have room in our little room for a bassinet. We're not that old. <laughs> grandkids are, grandkids are, are like years away. She isn't oh. even dating anybody I yet. am not talking about her. Why is it men cannot, <laughs> men can't take a hint. You have to spell everything out for you. You're not listening to a word I said. Are you thinking about that sewing room again? <laughs> You have not picked up a needle and thread for years. You know, it's hard to thread a needle, dear, when you're throwing up in the toilet every morning. The last time that I saw you sew was when we went on that uh, second honeymoon anniversary oh, thing yes. that you wanted to be so romantic, so uh -huh. you brought needlework. There's a turn on for you. <laughs> That, that was the last time I saw you make anything. That was the last time we made anything. I should have sewed more that weekend. Isn't that, isn't that where we saw that sauna thing? <sighs> That would be a great know. idea. Put a sauna right in there next to the weights. The weights? Uh, weights, weights. We've been talking about exercise equipment. Weights go with exercise equipment. When are women going to learn oh, to listen? Lord. Weights will be great. Oh, they'll be great. Six pounds and nine ounces worth of great. Six pounds, nine ounces. I'll have you know I'm up to 10 pounds with each arm. You are married to one 43-year-old stud <laughs> muffin. Right. 
Yes. That's true, little cupcake, and you're 45. 45, 43. Who cares? What I'm getting at is when she comes home mm -hmm. from college, yes. she isn't going to recognize us. We're going to be, in eight or nine months, we're going to be different people. In eight or nine months, we're going to be more people. I don't know why you're so upset about this. You know what? You're just afraid. You're afraid to try something different. That's all. You're afraid to try something different. It's going to be mm -hmm. great. You don't have to worry about it. You know what? It'll be like, uh, it'll be just like this. Look at here. It'll Look. be like giving birth. No, it'll be like this. We could build shelves in the corner right there. See that? You could make that a changing table. That's a good idea, but let's make it a changing room. There'll be more privacy. We could have our own, have our own YMCA right oh, there. It'll be our own little Y, all right. W-H-Y. See it now. Yes. Mirrors from the ceiling to the floor. Oh. Uh, indoor, outdoor oh. carpeting from door to door. Yeah, all right. Weight. Mm -hmm. A little exercise machine. Oh. Where are you going? I thought you were going to tell me something. No, you know, I don't need to tell you anything. In about five or six months, I think you'll figure it out yourself. <laughs> Why spoil the surprise now? Surprise? Yes. It's a surprise? <laughs> oh, no. You're not. We're not. You got me a Bowflex machine. <laughs> Let me clear two things up because this is just the art of television. I'm not expecting. <laughs> that man is not my husband. <laughs> But he is a wonderful comedian and a great friend. Would you please thank my friend, Mr. Ken Davis? <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> you know. Seventy-five-year-old stud muffin. I am a seventy-five. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much. Thank you, Shonda. It's been Love a delight. Thank God you bless. Very much. <laughs> the true part of that sketch is, I would get choked up. I think it was about 18 years ago when a doctor did hand me a little six pound, 12 ounce girl and tell me to hang on tightly. She won't be little for long. And I thought, oh yeah, right. And he was telling the truth. It didn't take very long at all for her to grow up and she is heading off to college. I think that is the scariest thing for a mom to have a little one facing college. It's kind of, we're the ones taking the test to see if they'll ever learn how to iron anything. <laughs> She's going to be going to school for about four years with wrinkled clothes, and, uh, and that's not the biggest test. You just wonder how you will get through the whole empty nest feeling. And so I sat down and wrote some words uh, for moms who are allowing their children to head off to college or leave home at this time in their lives, and for moms who suddenly find themselves completely alone, and they're terrified. It goes like this. It's time to shut her suitcase Wish I could climb inside Eighteen years and they have flown by And now she longs for college life I hide my tears Cause she has no fear She 
just smiles and waves goodbye. What's a mom hold on to when it's time to let her fly? I just hold on tighter to a hand that's stronger. The strength is always near to calm my every fear. I just hold on tighter to a heavenly father who knows my every thought and cheers my weary heart to hold on tight. Tears roll down her face As she reads papers he has filed Thirty years of marriage gone now And he didn't say goodbye The kids are grown Life shouldn't be like this. So what's a woman hold on to when there's no one there to keep? She just holds on. Just holds on tighter to a heavenly father who knows her every thought and cheers her weary heart to hold on. Will you indulge me just a little so I, that I might introduce to you the uh, brand new freshman at Oral Roberts University, my daughter, Shara. Yeah. Love you. I want to say we'll be back right after these messages together. We'll say it together. One, two, three. We'll, we'll be, be back, back right after these messages. This week, Fear TV presents The Mom Factor. <laughs> Join us this week as one mother faces what every mother fears. Carpools. Thursday nights at 8, 7 Central. You know, we've been talking about things that uh, scare you to death, and so I thought it would be appropriate that we talk about my mother. 
She takes a beating, doesn't she? She's very precious. She enjoys it, I think, sort of. Okay, maybe not, but her hearing's not that good, so really. <laughs> now, here's the thing. My favorite thing to do, and I know I'm, I'm admitting this in front of all of you, so you'll send me letters. This is, I love to scare my mother. <laughs> It's just the whole shock value kind of a thing. It's just that oh, look on her face is so funny. And so you just work at that. You know what I mean? Because I, my mother loves me. And that is the most assuring thing in the entire world for any child is to know that you have a fully devoted mother who adores you and can no longer chase you down. <laughs> Makes the whole unconditional thing really work. We were back there. I was giggling with uh, Nicole going, how, how do you think the show is going? Do you think people are enjoying this? And she goes, I, I think it's going good. I can't hear a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's real reassuring. <laughs> but the thing that it, it, it just struck me funny because I've been talking about fear and all the things that I'm afraid of. And, and what I got tickled was, I have to admit to you, you guys scare me. <laughs> learned uh, uh, in a very tender way. God's love is the most unconditional thing I have ever found to be true in my life. You guys are a lot more picky. <laughs> I mean, I get letters over what my hair looked like, uh, you know, what word I used, what word I stumbled on, and what it sounded like I used. <laughs> It's just, we have a tendency, if we're not careful, to pick each other apart. And, and so that does scare me. I grew up a preacher's kid, so I remember what it was like to live under the magnifying glass of the world. You know, and, and in a way, that was good. That accountability is all good, and, and, but sometimes we take it too far. I've learned one thing, and that is to loosen up and lighten up in my life and know that I can't please everybody and the whole wide world. So I have concentrated on pleasing one person, one person entity in my life, and that is God, the Father. Well, and my husband. <laughs> so I feel like if I please God and my husband, I've got it, and my mother. I'd... <laughs> Just God, my husband, and my mother, and, and then your, and my children. You don't, you want your, <laughs> you want your children to be proud of you, you know, and not be embarrassed to be seen with you in the store, and so God, my husband, my mother, and my children, and my pastor means <laughs> so much to me. He's a wonderful pastor, and so I want my church family to be proud of me, and I want God and my husband and my children and my mother and my pastor and my whole church family to really be pleased with my life and the homeowners association in my neighborhood. <laughs> They're very particular about what you're allowed to put in your yard, and they don't like my old Chevette sitting there. It's, I call it art, and they said no. But still, but so God and my husband and my mother and my children, my church family, my pastor, and the homeowners association of uh, the little neighborhood I live in, if you get that straight, you've got it whooped. So there's actually nothing to be afraid of. The funniest thing is, this is true, my, uh, I, I don't mean to shock my mother, it's just that it, it is quite delightful. They have this new restaurant in downtown Nashville, Tennessee called This Is Not An Advertisement, so I won't tell you what it's called, because they're not paying me. Okay, I'll tell you what it's called, Blackstone. It's this real interesting pizza kind of a place, and when I saw it being built and what they were putting there in the front window, I couldn't wait to take my mother there. This is true. Because <laughs> my mother all my life told me that everything in the world leads to beer. <laughs> this is the truth. <laughs> it's my mother's perspective is what was always so fun. Honey, don't dance. That leads to beer. <laughs> it's the truth. You can't say that. That leads to beer. <laughs> don't wear that. That leads to beer. You know, when they started advertising beer on television, <laughs> that just rocked my mother's world. You know what I mean? Because we were very conservative growing up. I used to, this is true. I've told this before. We used to hide a radio under the bed and, you know, and wait till my parents left to, uh, to uh, move slightly to the music. <laughs> And 
this is the truth. One night we turned the radio on, my sisters and I, we wet paper towels, wrapped them up the bottom of our legs. Those were our go-go boots. <laughs> we turned it up real loud and heard, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. I knew I was gonna burn. <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah in my Bible is not no bullfrog. No, no. And I knew my mother would not be happy because we all know frogs lead to beer. <laughs> so I took my mom out to eat. And so you have to picture this, and I'm not uh, advocating uh, alcohol by any means. Uh, you know, I will get a letter <laughs> from my entire church family, my homeowners association. So this is the truth. They built this restaurant around this huge distillery. It's just the, where they brew uh, beer. And so I thought it'd be funny to just take Mother in there, see how long it took her to figure out where we were sitting there eating, you know? <laughs> but here's the thing, it's like the joke was on me, because we walked through and she was like, oh, it's, I haven't seen one of these for years. <laughs> We sat there, ordered our pizza, you know, and the little waitress came up. She goes, oh, honey, let me ask you something. How old is this particular one? Because my father wanted one of these for years, and he had to do all his milking by hand. that they were making me open. <laughs> I think right now, this very moment, she just found out they weren't. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But the Lord will forgive you for eating there, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the funniest thing. My mother's hilarious. She's just very, very particular, you know. She used to call the preacher up. If one of us had the flu, she'd call him to ask if it's okay to take NyQuil, you know. <laughs> It's the truth, you know. She saw an empty bottle of NyQuil in the bathroom at my house not long ago. Begged me, brought home brochures and everything for some 12-step program. <laughs> She's just very conservative. She's very conservative. She's a wonderful lady. But I, there are some things about my past that I can't say that I'm particularly proud of, and so I'm not telling you about them. <laughs> do have personal fears. I think it's kind of why I decided to put this whole night together. Is there are things that you just never dreamed anyone would know or find out when you do begin to have some kind of a public life. You run into that one person that you knew in high school <laughs> that you wished had gone on to glory land before. <laughs> And you know what scares me more than running into somebody from high school? Is if you show, if they show up with a little press badge, National Enquirer. <laughs> that's my, that terrifies me. And I know that's crazy. I know it's probably performance oriented kind of person, you know, but I stand in the grocery store and read the National Enquirer, making sure there's nothing on there about me. <laughs> it's the truth. I stood there in the grocery line. There's something about Billy Graham. If they could find something on him, they don't have to look very far. <laughs> For me, you know, and so that scares me. It just terrifies me because I, I gave my mama fits, and I'm glad she is still here to see that her praying paid off a little. <laughs> Tonight she's decided to pray once more. The truth of the matter, my mother was a wonderful, uh, I keep saying like she's not here. My mother is a wonderful woman. She really is, but she insisted that we girls take piano, and my brother for that matter, we, she insisted that we take piano lessons. And, and so she was always wanted us to use our music in some way. And, and I'll tell you the truth. Can I just play this for you real quick? I hated piano lessons. <laughs> I was not a good student. I had the uh, attention span of a cocker spaniel puppy. <laughs> And so I, I just wasn't, uh, you know, I just didn't stick with the lessons like I should. And, and so, of course, Mother always wanted us to learn songs of the church in case we would need to use them uh, for any time, you know. And she was the church piano player, and I guess she thought she might get sick, and we'd have to fill in. And so the first song, of course, I ever learned...
loves me in a very bitter fashion. <laughs> it never really goes over, you know? <laughs> so I tried to move on, you know, to something else that would, that the, you know, heavy handedness wouldn't matter. So I, I got kind of tired of trying to study piano and I started studying piano players. <laughs> Because when I was a kid, there were some funny piano players out there. I, I mean, I'm not being ugly, but if you memorized a couple of chords with your left hand, you could play any hymn in the Bible, I mean, in the, in the hymnal. You know what I'm talking about? They played three or four different chords with your left hand. You could play any hymnal out there like this. You get that thing cranking, you could go all night. <laughs> Is this blessing anyone? This, the funniest thing as a teenager was um, the quartets. We lived in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for a little while so we could uh, get quartets to come to our church. <laughs> Sad but true. And the funny thing about, you know, quartets back in those days, now they're very sophisticated, but back there it was like... <laughs> Just a few slow learners back there. <laughs> the quartets back then, man, they had that polyester suit and that Elvis hair. They were so cute. And I don't mean this ugly, but you know, Minnie Pearl used to say, just cause you're on a diet don't mean you don't look in the refrigerator. <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> these quartets were coming. They were so cute. And I'd sit on the front row. <sighs> you know, and, and because they had that cool turnaround. You know what I mean? It means if you like the song, they turn around and do it again. You know what I'm... Anyway, I just thought that was funny. I just threw that in there for free. <laughs> so the part of my testimony that is uh, scary to me and difficult because uh, my children are here <laughs> is I, I, I went to college, believe it or not. I went to a, a wonderful old Christian school in Nashville, Tennessee for a brief time, and, and they suggested another one uh, down the... <laughs> Thought I'd just tell you that before the National Enquirer did. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I transferred to uh, Austin P. University in Clarksville, Tennessee, not very far from where we are this very night. Evidently, people care. And so <laughs> <laughs> that school showed up in droves tonight, didn't they? <laughs> this it's just a part of my testimony I uh, got a job there was a little holiday Inn, little hotel of some sort um, near the campus where I was going to school and I was broke and then and, and didn't know a lot and needed to get a job and I discovered there was a little room down there uh, that served beverages um, <laughs> had unusual lighting and And a piano over in the corner. Uh, and if you put a jar on there. <laughs> you could collect a little offering. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know what a tip jar is. Pride. <laughs> Maybe you're uncomfortable with the concept. The 
the hard thing is, can now you got to picture this. There is nothing more uh, uncomfortable. Now, in my mother's world, in the old-fashioned terms, she used the word conviction a lot. You don't know how convicting it is to know that you're probably someplace you really don't need to be. And you're away from what you know to be right and true in your life, and and there you are. And you're playing some bluesy music in a dark room trying to make a couple of dollars. <laughs> and you look out, and there's your mother sitting on the front <laughs> row. <laughs> with a glass of milk and a King James Bible. <laughs> so then I discovered, you know... <laughs> If I just changed the words around a little bit, that maybe she would uh, think I was witnessing. <laughs> you know, and that would make me a little more comfortable and it would help, you know, help her a little bit. So this was my, my big hit. Don't know who. Since my Lord and I ain't together, <laughs> keeps raining all the time. When he went away, old blues walked in and met me. If he stays away, I know my mom's gonna get me. All I do is pray <laughs> the Lord above will let me walk in the sun once more. Can't go on. Everything I had is gone. Stormy weather. Since the Lord sent mom out to get her. <laughs> Keeps raining all the time. Sunday school starts at 10. <laughs> Anybody need a little tip? Tip in the tip jar. Only a dollar? <laughs> well, thanks a lot. That does crack me up, even if no one else cares. <laughs> I, uh, I have had a great time. I hope you have. You know, the interesting thing about when you talk about fear, you have to talk about how to overcome it a little bit. I don't know where you are, but when I really did begin to write out some ideas and put this thing together, it's when I found myself at a very terrified place. Uh, when things from your past seem to crop up or you're heading to new territory you never dreamed you'd be going in, uh, you just get frightened when your kids are going off to college and you hope you've done well and uh, you got a new preacher. <laughs> you know, sometimes it starts with the little things and then all of a sudden you find yourself just terrified at every corner. Sometimes you turn on the television and something has happened in the world that has just stopped us all from breathing for a little while, and you're terrified. I have found when I am most frightened and most afraid uh, to read, <laughs> it impresses my husband, who's always wanted me to read more. And uh, <laughs> But I will tell you this, I decided that I would end the night expressing to you from a, a, a passage from a novel that I just finished. And out of this novel came some truth and some knowledge that I wanted to leave with you before we said goodnight tonight on TV. And let me just share a couple of passages. It's a very profound book, and I want... <laughs> well, I, it was a hard book to get... <laughs> it's a hard book to get through, but I just... I think some of you need to hear this, so. If, you, if you've read this and you want to follow along, I understand. 
Once upon a time, <laughs> once upon a time, there were three little pigs. <laughs> this is very serious. <laughs> they went out to seek their fortune. The first went off, met a man with a bundle of straw, and said to him, Please, man, can you give me the straw to build me a house? <laughs> I, I thought that was odd, too. They didn't even pay for it. <laughs> Wonderful world they live in. So, which the man did, and the little pig built a house with it. Presently, long... <laughs> Presently, along came the big bad wolf, and he knocked, <laughs> and he knocked on the door, and he said, "Pigs, little pig, let me come in." No, not by the hair. Chin, chin, chin. That's very good. <laughs> so I'll huff, and I'll. And I'll blow your house in. That is so good. And <laughs> so he huffed and he puffed. And he blew the house in. <laughs> the second little pig met a man with a bundle of sticks. And he said to the man, please, man. Can I have those sticks to build me a house? Very generous men. <laughs> and the man did. So the little pig built a house out of sticks. Along came the big bad wolf. And he knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. The little pig said, No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow the house in. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> the third little pig met a man with a load of bricks. <laughs> Please, man, give me those bricks to build me a house with. So the man gave him the bricks to build a house with. <laughs> then came the big bad wolf. He stood at the door and knocked on the door and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I will huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and he, oh, no, this is, <laughs> this is where it gets really good. <laughs> so he huffed and he puffed, and he huffed and he puffed, and he puffed. And he huffed. <laughs> but he could not blow the house down. Isn't that great? <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> carefully because it's really good. <laughs> Let me read another story for you. I like this one better. These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. Homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They're foundational words. Words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you're like a smart carpenter or pig who built his house on solid rock. 
The rain poured down, the river flooded, the tornado hit, the big bad wolf showed up. But nothing moved that house because it was fixed to the rock. One of the greatest things I've learned in my life is we cannot tell the wind to stop blowing, but we hold on to the one who created the wind. We cannot change every phobia and fear that crops up, but when they do, we run in the house. The one we have built around ourselves with tools like trusting in God and peace and comfort that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. And then we don't have to be afraid. You see, I believe a long, long time ago in the garden, God meant for things to be peaceful and good and kind and fun. And somewhere when that separation from God and man came along, fear entered into the world. Someday we will be with him again and there'll be no fear until then keep building a stronger house around ourselves and Jesus comes and dwells with us so we do not have to be afraid you see without him without relationship with God we will forever feel incomplete but with relationship with the Father even on this side of heaven somehow we feel complete again and we don't have to be afraid we never have to be afraid I bring this sacrifice, my open heart. I offer up my life. I look to you, Lord. Your love that never ends restores me again. So I live.
sweet thing is when you uh, put together some ideas and some jokes and some stories that you hope in turn would tickle somebody to death. You pray that um, somebody gets the message behind the madness. And that is that right now in this day and age, we live in a world that doesn't feel safe all the time. But I love a God who even though I'm 500 miles from home or my daughter is 9 hours, 42 minutes and 27 seconds <laughs> away from home, I feel good because God is good. So tonight, for those of us who struggle with our own fear, it would be my honor, whether it's on video or not, to pray with you. Because if you're used to coming to a Shonda show, you know that I love God more than I love my job. And it would be uh, ludicrous for us to have gone to all this trouble and not pray. Can we pray together? God. How wonderful you are. How tender and kind. It's been a long day. And we've hurried and we've rushed and we've worried and we thought we wouldn't make it. And then in your kindness, you showed us. Thank you. Tonight, Lord, we've talked about fear and struggle and worry and, <laughs> and then the big picture of things. Who are we? For you said in your word, I am God, the Almighty. Is there anything too hard for me? No. Thank you for being God. Thank you for holding on to us even when we felt like we couldn't hold on to you. We love you, Lord. And tonight we say thank you for calming our fears. And all your children said together, Amen. Well, thank you. We made it to the end of the night. You can uh, quit snotting now. <laughs> thank you very much. Drive safely going home. And remember, be afraid. Be very afraid. I could show up on your front step at any moment with a sledgehammer or a box of Krispy Kreme. Was that good? Thank you for coming. Mr. Pillsbury. <laughs> You're 45. 45, 43, who cares? The point is that when she comes home from college, mm -hmm. she is not going to recognize us. <laughs> In eight or nine months, we're going to be different people. In eight or nine months, we're going to be more people. You know, I, I don't know why you're so afraid of change. You're so down in the mouth over all of this. It'll be like, it'll be like, uh, like, like this. No, like, this. like giving birth to something. You know, I cannot remember what I'm supposed to say right now. Don't worry. What is it? Chills. 
Wait, wait, wait. What are we going to do with the baby then? <laughs> Where do you? Oh. <laughs> you get real testy during these times, don't you? Good night. What is our pickup line? Let's start there. <laughs> what? No, I don't know what. Down in the dumps. Okay, yeah. It's like giving birth. Yeah, you uh, get you get so you get so down in the dumps about this. Yeah. It, it's like it's like like uh, giving birth. No, no, it's like this. Look at here. We could build shelves in in the corner. <laughs> or Mama, That's I'm so life. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let Why me don't find. you go home that little weekend with her? <laughs> okay. <laughs> look, it'll Woo! be like... Look, it'll be like this. We could build shelves in the corner. <laughs> Why don't you put a little changing table in the corner? Change, changing room would be better. There's more privacy with a changing room. It would be like our own YMCA. Yep. It's going to be our own Y, all right? W-H-Y. I can picture it now. Oh, yeah. Full-length mirrors all around the room. <laughs> Indoor, outdoor carpeting wall mm -hmm. to wall. Little set of weights in the corner. I can yes, picture the whole it's thing. It's going to be wonderful. Thought you were going to tell me something. Did you have something to tell me? No, I decided to just wait about six or seven months. You'll figure it out on your own. <laughs> well, I'll spoil the surprise now. Surprise? Yes, a big surprise. Surprise? You don't mean you're... We're, you got me a bow flag. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I screwed it up. <laughs> oh.